Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk about the welcoming of Ubuntu Unity as a new Ubuntu spin. Now, this used to be called Ubuntu Unity Respin. And basically, when Ubuntu abandoned Unity 7 to move back to GNOME to reprioritize the company focus in other places... Uh, it was picked up, and I hope I pronounced the name correctly, but the name is uh, Rudra Swaraswat, um, who took over the project, and he has kept it alive, security patches, all the nine yards. Now he's even reaching out and doing work with UB ports and the Unity 8 team to get a little bit of crossover there, although we're not sure if the, um, I and I hope that the Ubuntu respin does not become Unity 8. That was a train wreck. Uh, but who knows? Maybe I'll get a little bit better. Um, but reporting from 9 to 5 Linux uh, this week, and thanks to, uh, I think it was, Titus, who um, sent this out to me um, on our Christian Discord site, uh, this got put in uh, in the list there. And Nine to Five Linux um, goes ahead and reports on this that Canonical officially accepts Ubuntu Unity as an official flavor, starting with twenty two. 10. Now, in the article here, it says you can grab it in the daily builds. I went to the daily builds, and it is not in here unless it's one of these. I mean, I pretty much recognize everything in this list, uh, and I do not see it in here yet for the daily builds of Ubuntu. Uh, and this is the direct link from the 9 to 5 Linux article. So unless I'm missing something, and I could be, um, I did not download every single one of these. I don't have enough bandwidth for that. Um, but I did go ahead and download the latest version of Ubuntu Unity so we can have a brief look at it. Here is the vote from the Ubuntu list serve uh, where the, the developers of Ubuntu Unity have been working towards the goal of getting um, a respin or a uh, official flavor status for a while. And there were a lot of uh, difficulties uh, involved in that process. And so he's been working through and working through and eventually he got everything right, correct. He got all of the uh, trademark stuff down, all of the approvals, everything is all set. And the vote went out and on September 1st, um, actually, it looks like it was probably uh, on August 31st. It was officially voted in as an official flavor. So you can head on over to their website. I'll go ahead and uh, refresh their website because there's a cool little re preloading there. And um, you can have a, have a look over here and you can download it. So Unity 7 ain't dead. Look at that. Um, so uh, there is uh, a little bit... Uh, about the distro over here. There's some testimonials. Of course, you can hit the download button, a little bit obscured by my penguin there. And um, from this, you can grab the 2204.1, the 2004.5, and then there's older downloads, including some test ones. I didn't actually look for the test server. Let's see if... Uh, if they have any of those official flavors there or not, I, I don't know. Um, as of right now, though, uh, on the daily builds of Ubuntu, it appears as though those are not up there yet. Although we would expect to see them very soon, being as that the betas are due out uh, any time now. I think uh, I think the 29th of September is when the beta hits um, for an official release in uh, mid to late October. So let's go ahead and just have a brief look at um, at this guy here. We're going to have a look over at the uh, virtual machine. And I downloaded this, the download for the current version of Ubuntu Unity. This is the 2204.1. Uh, this one is about a 3.5 gigabyte download. So as following the trend of Ubuntu, it is indeed a large download. So just be aware of that. I went down to a coffee shop and grabbed it. And let's see what happens here on the install. All right, so it does take a little bit of time to get here. It does not seem like a super smooth system in the context of my VirtualBox, which is kind of sad because when I was using a lot of VirtualBox in the past, I was able to just run Ubuntu really well um, out of the, the virtual machines. So I don't know what the, the lag is here. Let's go ahead and check the memory usage. 
Um, initially, I thought it might be uh, because I ported this VM over from my other computer and I had not um, uh, changed the settings. So it only had like two cores and like three gigs of memory. Uh, but this one here, I bumped it up to having four cores and six gigs of memory. And, and I think I have four gigs of memory. And it is it is slow and laggy. It is not a real good experience so far. Um, but in reality, every version of Ubuntu has been that way for me for a good few editions. And so uh, as far as testing in a virtual box, I, you know, I just... I, it's been my experience that this has been how Ubuntu has been lately. And I think it's been a reason for its decline in popularity. Sure, it may be the Fourier most of us uh, old hats have gotten into Linux, but it didn't keep a lot of the philosophy that kept it there. It's become this giant bloated mess such that even on a streaming PC, it's lagging out on me, even giving it a lot of resources. So... I don't know, but uh, let's see what happens when we actually get the installation done. Uh, you can't see the installer here is going to be the same as the basic Ubuntu installer. Uh, as the developer is working on wanting this to be an official flavor, not departing from any of the major Ubuntu differences. Simply Ubuntu with Unity Desktop and a few other adjustments. So there's the same issue I've had with several of the Ubuntu um uh, several of the Ubuntu base distros lately, Linux Mint is doing this as well, where when you boot up the installer on the live key, it seems to um, it seems to mess with the uh, configurations. And this is it is actually a very highly frustrating. So whatever that is worth. All right. So anyway, let's go ahead and erase the disk. And install. We have advanced features. We can use ZFS, uh, which ZFS is the default on the live key. I think default is going to use ext4, and we can use LVM, and we can encrypt it as well. The encryption is going to use Lux. Go ahead and hit the install now, and it's going to run through the installation process. So now with the installation complete, we'll go ahead and hit the restart now button and it should shut us down and then ask us if we want to, well, actually it's going to force us to kick the ISO out, then it will reboot the VM. All right, so we'll go ahead and get logged in here, get our jammy jellyfish uh, background. And now that it is installed, once we change our display, it should remember our display change. Uh, this is just a little annoyance of working with VirtualBox. Keep the configuration. All right, so here's what we get. Now Now that we're no longer uh, live, and, okay, I was going to say now that we're no longer live, it seems as though it's not as laggy, but no, it's, it's pretty laggy. It's way laggier than it was. Um, I'm thinking that might have to do with some of the issues porting it back to... Um, uh, porting it over to Wayland, uh, because of course, remember Unity was not uh, explicitly, um, it was not explicitly a um, uh, Wayland compatible thing, and I believe that they do have it uh, here as Wayland, so hit down here is your applications we have installed, remember we just did the, the light version, and then there's 52 more here, so got to click on that to see the other applications, so here's our Firefox, Here's our Ubuntu software. Here's our settings. So everything in here is Unity 7 as we all remember it. Um, in my experience right here, it does seem a little laggier in the VM than I have had in the past running Ubuntu builds in a VM. Uh, so it, it does seem a little slow and laggy here, although I'm pretty sure that's going to be something related to the virtual box. Um, so it'd be neat if I still have a 16 uh, of an Ubuntu 1604 laying around to boot that up and see how that runs uh, in comparison. That would certainly be a, a fascinating thing to do. But let's go ahead and poke around in here and see what all's here. As far as our resources, you can see our four CPUs are not overly busy. We are running about a gig of RAM. 
Uh, there are software um, updates that are ready to install. We're not going to bother installing any of those. And then we he here we have our Ubuntu store, which is going to be your Snap store. We have Editor's Choice. We have Skype. We have Bitwarden, MailSpring, Spotify, VLC. So we have a variety of different things over here. Of course, we can search. I always like searching for uh, Kden Live because it kind of shows me what repositories are are set up here. So we have two different options. And this is a Snap Store option here, which is the latest 2204. And then over here, this is the one that is from the Ubuntu repositories. And let's see if they'll tell us what version this one is. Uh, 21, uh, 2112. Hey, good Rush album. Look at that. Um, so if you want to use... Um, uh, Kden Live, you have the Snap option or you have the repository option. That all is going to work pretty well out of the box. Everything else in here is going to be the same uh, settings that we have seen in the past. Uh, so here's our appearances. Um, so we have our launch behavior and we have various wallpapers to choose from. There you go. There's some nice jellyfish action going down there. We'll keep that one there. Then you have a theme default. Of course, if we change that, it's difficult to change it back. That's not a, uh, a mark on this system here. That's actually always been an issue inside of Unity. So you can overcome it by installing some tweak tools, uh, but otherwise I'm not going to mess with any of this. Uh, this is the new highlights color, which was put into the latest versions of Ubuntu. So you can actually still uh, do those highlight changes as well. And user accounts, software and updates. Here's sharing. Here's your system details. So everything in here is going to be exactly as you remember it. Uh, it's going to work fairly well as a, a basic Ubuntu Unity. Let's see, software updater. Um, let's turn on settings. Let's see what we have over there. I don't want to install anything right now. So here is, we can subscribe to all updates, security recommended, security only. We have daily check every two weeks, never check for updates. I have a lot of the options in here that you might want to have. Let's go ahead and hit the remind me later button here. There's that. All right. So if you remember um, how to use, if you remember how to use Unity uh, from all of your time in the past, then you can see that uh, you can easily toggle everything on here that you might want. Let me turn that off, turn that on there. You can show icons. Desktop icons work work well out of the box. We have new folders. We have new, new items, things like that. So there we have it. So now if you are wanting to have a situation where you like the old version of uh, Ubuntu with Unity, you can get the latest uh, builds of Ubuntu with all of their snaps and all of the hardware compatibilities, the latest kernel, and you can still keep that Unity. And thanks to the vote on the Ubuntu team, this is now an official flavor. So again, this is not a full comprehensive review of this uh, system. I just want to show you what it was how to install it, what it looks like, particularly if you're brand new to Linux, you may have not have seen Unity. That is the desktop environment we had with Ubuntu for a number of years. Of course, they started with GNOME uh, back in GNOME 2, and when GNOME moved to 3, Ubuntu didn't want to deal with that. They built Unity, and then they abandoned Unity to go back to GNOME uh, after a period of time to focus on other things. But now if you head on over to the Ubuntu page as of the next version, Ubuntu 22.10, then you will find Unity as an official flavor. So you can actually go ahead and grab this along with Mate or Budgie or XFCE. Uh, so these are the options. So congratulations to the Ubuntu um, Unity team for getting into there. And uh, I might want to test this on real hardware, see if the lag is a measure of my virtual machine or if it's something else. It might be my virtual machine. I got to say VirtualBox has been lagging out a little bit more on a lot more distros lately. So uh, maybe it's uh, merits time to switch to uh, GNOME boxes or something else. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. 
Anyway, um, congratulations again to the team. Thanks for watching this video, and I will go ahead and link a the last version that I did looking at more comprehensively at Ubuntu uh, Unity so you can have a look at what it looks like. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.